what is the fourth premium puzzle? Um, this puzzle, this idea, is related to the foreign exchange market. Um, and to talk about this idea, we should start from the the um, the basic, the most basic and important theory of foreign exchange rate, and that theory is called interest rate parity. It will be easiest to start from an example and um, <coughs> think about this interest rate parity. Um, let's consider uh, two countries, Korea. Um, Korea is somewhere here. Korea and um, U.S. U.S. is somewhere here. As an investor, as an international investor, uh, this investor may be Korean, may be American, or maybe even European, or some other national. Let's consider two uh, alternatives. Uh, if you have, if this investor has one dollar, this investor may decide to invest this one dollar into some area in the U.S. or this investor may consider the possibility of investing one dollar into Korea. And let's say this investor is very risk averse. So this investor doesn't want to buy any other securities like stocks or bonds. The investor just wants to put money in a bank. <coughs> now from this depositor's perspective, if the, the return from investing in the U.S. is higher than the return uh, from investing in Korea, then this investor will definitely invest in the U.S. Not only this particular investor, all the other investors will invest only in the U.S., not in Korea. If everyone is moving money to the U.S. and everyone is moving money out of Korea, then the international financial market cannot be in equilibrium. So what should happen in equilibrium is in equilibrium, whether you put this money here or here, you should expect to earn exactly the same amount of profit. So that's the basic idea here. That is effective return from investing in one country should be identical to the effective return from investing in any other country. What is the effective return in investing in the U.S.? Then if you invest in the U.S., one dollar, say one year later, you will get uh, one dollar plus interest rate uh, in the U.S., the U.S. dollar interest rate paid by the U.S. bank. If you invest this money, put this money into Korea, now you start with one dollar, so you will have to first exchange this one dollar into Korean one. Let's indicate the exchange rate by S. Um, when we talk about exchange rate, you know, we have to take some time and think about how to quote the exchange rate. We either quote exchange rate in terms of U.S. dollars and you may, we may write one dollar, uh, one Korean one equals say one over one thousand dollars. So that's one way to quote. Or we could quote the other way, something like one thousand one equals one dollar. So either way, uh, both are valid way to quote exchange rate, but we just need to stick to one convention than the other. And here we will uh, follow this particular convention uh, so that we are expressing the value of Korean won in terms of U.S. dollars. So one unit of Korean won has the price of 1 over 1,000. 
If you do the other way, it will be the other interpretation. That is, one unit of US dollar has the price of 1,000. So here, let's use the dollar as the, the base currency so that we think of all the other currency as something to price, something that has price. So this is the, the convention that we want to adopt. So S is the value of value of one unit of Korean one. Then if you start with one dollar, then with one dollars, one dollar, how many Korean ones can we buy? Um, with one dollar, the price is S. So you can buy one over S uh, units of Korean one. So one dollar can be exchanged into one over S Korean one. You put this money into Korean bank, then you will earn the interest rate paid by Korean bank. One year later, you want to convert this back to uh, US dollar. And the, again, S is the price of um, the Korean won. So one unit of Korean won has the value of S. So this many units of Korean won has a value of this times S. And these two S are different. This is the current exchange rate. So let's call it S0. This is the exchange rate that is determined one year later. So let's call this S1. Um, and what we are saying uh, is this number and this number should be identical, or at least the expected value should be same. Otherwise, investors will uh, either all concentrate in Korea or into US, so the market cannot be in equilibrium. So these two, so I'll write again, so 1 over S0. These two should be identical. S1 is not a known number now, so we will use expected value. So expected return from investing $1 in Korea should be identical to the expected return from investing $1 in the US. And this relationship is called interest parity, interest rate parity, and to uh, distinguish this from, this from a very related idea, we call this uncovered interest rate parity. So okay, I'll move this equation up. So this is called uncovered interest rate parity. A very much related idea to this is as an investor who is putting $1 into Korean bank, this investor may remove any risk associated with the exchange rate fluctuation. The way to do that is the investor may use forward contract. So by entering into a forward contract, the investor may fix the exchange rate now uh, using the forward exchange rate. So if the forward exchange rate is F0, then the investor can uh, fix the return at this number. And the right-hand side is same. So the investor who put $1 into Korea and fixed the return by using a Ford contract will earn exactly this much. 
And this investor, this return, should be, of course, identical to the other because this also doesn't have any risk. So this version of interest rate parity is called covered interest rate parity. Covered This is called covered because this position is covered, meaning this position doesn't have any risk because the investor knows exactly at what exchange rate this money will be exchanged into dollars. So the investor's position is safe from fluctuating exchange rate, and therefore you know, this can be called covered, while this one represents the expected return to the investor who didn't cover the position. So the exchange rate fluctuate depending on the exact value of this. This investor may have a different income than expected. And by comparing these two, you can see that this uh, situation, this position has some risk, while this position does not have any risk. So this relationship is much stronger than the other relationship. This relationship cannot be violated unless market is really, really in uh, under stress. While this relationship is relatively easily violated because we didn't really account for the possible consequence of the, the fluctuating exchange rate. So in reality, this relationship is almost always uh, satisfied, while this relationship is somewhat uh, less stable. One other thing you can say is by comparing these two, if uncovered interest rate parity holds in reality uh, together with the covered interest rate parity, then if everything uh, all, both equalities hold, then the left-hand side of the first equation should be same as the left-hand side of the second equation, which implies that the expected spot rate should be identical to forward rate. So if these two are true, then from this we can write Forward exchange rate should be, um, sorry, it's F0. Forward exchange rate should be identical to the expected value of the spot exchange rate in the future. Um, <coughs> this is a conventional, very common idea in uh, when we talk about forward and futures prices. Forward price or well, futures price should be unbiased predictor of the spot price uh, in the future. And these two versions of interest rate parities combined suggest that uh, forward rate should be unbiased predictor of the spot price. And in other parts of this course, we discuss this idea uh, by focusing on the, the symmetry of the forward contract. If this is violated, that means one side, buyer or seller, expect to earn extra profit. And that is, uh, that is something strange because in, if one side, buyers or sellers, expect to earn, and if the other side expect to lose, and the other side don't really have any reason to participate in the market. So this is a uh, rather intuitive condition that you may expect to uh, observe in futures and forward market. And these two versions of interest rate parity imply the same condition. Now, uh, in reality, uh, 
as I mentioned earlier, this is almost always satisfied. This is not always satisfied. That means this is also not always satisfied. And that's what is often called forward premium puzzle because uh, intuitively also according to this logic we described forward price should be a good predictor of future spot price, spot price in the future. But in reality when you actually check whether forward price is close to the future spot price one period later we find that uh, the relationship is often violated. And that relationship is often violated because this relationship is often violated. And this relationship is violated in particular direction. Uh, usually, uh, the, when you in a situation like this, if the investor put $1 into a country with higher interest rate, the return tends to be higher. So instead of having um, equality here, uh, quite often in reality, you see that the, the side with higher interest rate tends to earn higher uh, effective return. And that pattern is considered puzzling because it violates the uncovered interest rate parity idea. It also violates this idea that forward price is unbiased predictor of the spot price in the future. And that pattern that the high interest rate parity, high interest rate currencies on higher return than low interest rate currency is sometimes called um, profit, profit owned by carry traders. Um, whether the carry profit is very stable or not, there are you know, different, uh, different ideas. Some say carry profit is very unstable, um, especially around the global financial crisis of 2008. The carry traders made huge loss. So this pattern is not uh, very indicative of the long-term trend. It just was um, people noticed this pattern. This pattern existed for a relatively short period of time, but that's not indicative of what one would see uh, from a long period of time. So there are various view perspectives on carry profit. Uh, some do believe that this is a uh, very stable pattern, while others say this is not very stable pattern. But anyway, this um, Ford premium puzzle is uh, the Ford premium puzzle is mostly generated by this phenomena of carry profit. Mostly, not always, not hundred percent, but mostly generated by carry profit. Um, there are different views uh, of the significance of this phenomena, uh, all these three identical uh, related phenomena. Um, 